Live from our seven Tasmania studios, your nightly news with Kim Miller begins now. Good evening everyone. The state government has made its long-awaited announcement on when our COVID-19 border restrictions will be lifted and it's subject to a very big condition. The Premier has pencilled in July 24, just four weeks from now, but it depends on the situation interstate and Victoria's escalating coronavirus spike. Airports empty and flights grounded. For months, Tasmania's borders remained firmly shut. But today, the Premier set a date for travel restrictions to lift. The date that we are setting is Friday the 24th of July. It means those entering Tasmania wouldn't have to self-quarantine when they arrive. But a warning, that date is only pencilled in, all depending on other states, especially Victoria, which recorded 30 new cases today. The situation carefully monitored under a new four-week border plan. It will include reviewing the circumstances of other states and territories on a weekly basis. And we will have a formal review of Victoria's situation in two weeks. If uh, the situation in Victoria uh, unfortunately went uh, uh, deteriorated and became more problematic, um, then that might also give us uh, pause for thought. If borders do open, an app would be used instead of an entry card to track the virus, also working on precautions to those transferring through Melbourne Airport. We will continue our engagement with airlines in regards to direct flights uh, wherever possible to states and territories that are currently COVID free. And we'll work with the Victorian government to understand the measures that are currently in place. We need some uh, stakes in the ground around tangible flights and tangible access to those states that are safe, uh, safe for Tasmanians. It's welcome news for our tourism operators left without interstate customers for three months. The opening of the borders is crucial. Uh, obviously it's really important for us that it's, uh, it is safe, but from a hospitality point of view, we definitely need the customers. So yeah, looking forward to that. This is a long road ahead of us when we're looking at the next uh, two to three years of, of recovery. Um, access into the state and, and, and issues around that are certainly going to impact the tourism industry for quite a long time. A lot of businesses like me are bleeding at the moment with the need of cash flow, but we don't want it to happen too early. We want it to be done at the right time where it's minimal risk to the community. And experts are predicting the tourists will come back. We have a bit of a lull leading up to Christmas and then obviously some sense of normality from, from summer. But the Premier reaffirming any border decision sits solely in the hands of public health. I don't care who is calling for it whether it be a lobby group, whether it be the Prime Minister. If the public health advice is that we should maintain our restrictions, then we will maintain our restrictions. Today's announcement, one step closer to bringing down the walls of Fortress Tasmania. Michelle Wisby, 7 Tasmania News. Life is slowly returning to normal for Tasmanians, with a raft of restrictions lifted at the stroke of midday today. The biggest change is in physical distancing rules, with pubs and cafes now able to seat more patrons. Larger indoor gatherings have also allowed casinos, crippled by the shutdown, to reopen. Public in Pete pours two better times. Cheers. Cheers. With one person now allowed per two square metres, there's plenty of room at the inn. It's a bit of a relief. We've still got a long way to go and, you know, the businesses aren't out of the woods yet, but it does bring a big smile on my face to see some of my operators, you know, with a smile on their face and starting to trade a bit better. After months of shutdown limbo, the gaming industry finally hit the jackpot. We're welcoming nearly a thousand people back just in our business alone today. It's been some really difficult times in the last in recent weeks and months, but we can see the recovery now. At Rest Point, Kino numbers lit up once again. The new capacity numbers were just as clear. Although not everyone is a winner in today's relaxed rules. Nightclubs are staying shut while dancing is outlawed and seating mandatory for patrons. There's no point of opening the doors because that is what nightclubs are about. So it, it's confusing to the customers if they were to come in here. 500 are permitted at outdoor events. Most markets will be allowed so is competitive community sport, spas and food courts. And after three months, zoos are now reopening. The shutdown has been especially tough, with some operators relying on public donations to help feed animals. So today is our very first reopening um, since the closure um, from COVID. Uh, we're very thrilled to be back open seeing people through the doors. 
Sean McComish, 7 Tasmania News. And dreams of watching international soccer in Tasmania are one step closer to reality. With Tasmania tipped as a host to the Women's World Cup, it's sparked delight amongst the local fraternity. As the huge news slowly trickled down to Tasmania, the cheers at the grassroots grew louder. The landmark decision giving the next generation of soccer stars the opportunity to see their heroes battle against the world's best on home soil. The likes of Sam Kerr, Caitlin Ford and Hayley Razo. You've always had to go to the mainland to watch any sort of big game and now it's really exciting that it's coming here. When I was younger, that was probably one of my biggest oh, inspirations was the Matildas. Launceston's UTAS Stadium is one of 12 locations across the Tasman in line to host as many as three matches. For all the ladies out there and the boys I'm sure as well will want to come in and watch these games. It's going to be fantastic. But of all the potential grounds it received the lowest technical score with fears the oval configuration could cost a hosting opportunity. I don't see that as uh, being an inhibitor to playing games. Utah's is fantastic. I've played um, a few games there myself. The last major international tournament to grace Launceston shores was the 2003 Rugby World Cup match between Romania and Namibia. The council believes the 2003 soccer competition will create a similar economic windfall. It's going to bring people here, it's going to bring teams here that will be training for a, who knows, two to three months or a month or two. I don't know how long they'll be here, but while they're here, they're going to be spending money. Here at Launceston City Football Club, the last two years have seen a massive growth in female numbers. It's hoped this decision will put the fire in the belly of many more young girls and boost participation across the state. Women's soccer has really grown in the last five years and I think that the Matildas are the team that we have to thank for that. Tasmania has never produced a Matildas player. Maybe it's only a matter of time. Garth Burley, 7 Tasmania News. A man has appeared in court on a series of charges, including supporting a criminal organisation. Fahed El Niz faced the Hobart Magistrates Court after being arrested as part of a major operation at Dover earlier this month. He's also charged with making false and misleading statements in applications and dishonestly intending to cause a loss. He was remanded in custody to reappear on July 24. The state government is rolling out more support for our state's crop and seed industry, aiming to increase production over the next four years and beyond. Launching a new Tasmanian crop and pasture seed industry plan to set out key priority areas for the industry's <laughs> development and growth. It's welcomed by key players in the industry who say they've seen significant expansion in the past few years due to our favourable climate. There's not a lot of places in the world that are suitable or as, or as good a position as Tasmania uh, to produce seed, uh, particular temperate seeds, and so this is what's really driving that. We'll be working shoulder to shoulder with the industry, with our researchers in the TAS Institute of Agriculture to deliver on our plans, and that's for sustainable uh, and profitable agriculture in terms of growing crops and seeds. The seed production industry provides an estimated farm gate value of $37 million to our state's economy. Tasmania's three racing clubs are calling on the industry and the government to increase the amount of money they provide in stakes. Representatives from the clubs releasing a research paper into industry funding, saying they desperately need a promised boost to continue attracting participants to the sport. They're asking TAS Racing, the governing body, to prioritise funding stakes in its budget. Essentially, stakes money is the cornerstone uh, of the industry and uh, when they languish, the industry languishes. And right now, that's what's happening. We've got an ongoing plan in terms of our our infrastructure and in terms of welfare and in terms of, of sustainable growth of the industry. So it is charted in that. Um, we will put as much as we can into stakes. The government says it remains committed to supporting the racing industry and is delivering its election commitment of an average annual stakes increase of 4%. Tasmania's three racing clubs are calling on the industry and the government to increase the amount of money they provide in stakes. 
Representatives from the clubs releasing a research paper into industry funding, saying they desperately need a promised boost to continue attracting participants to the sport. They're asking TAS Racing, the governing body, to prioritise funding stakes in its budget. Essentially, stakes money is the cornerstone uh, of the industry and uh, when they languish, the industry languishes. And right now, that's what's happening. We've got an ongoing plan in terms of our, our infrastructure and in terms of welfare and in terms of, of sustainable growth of the industry. So it is charted in that. Um, we will put as much as we can into stakes. The government says it remains committed to supporting the racing industry and is delivering its election commitment of an average annual stakes increase of 4%. Taz Tape Hospitality students have been putting their skills to special use over the past few weeks, cooking up a storm for a good cause. The kitchen operations and cookery classes normally create meals for their on-site cafe and restaurant at Drysdale, which has been shut due to the pandemic. Instead, they're creating around 80 meals a day, donated to Colony 47, and then distributed to youth accommodation sites across the Hobart area. You see a lot of people uh, right now that are struggling, um, and just to do anything to help them is obviously a great. Um, and we're making so much food anyway that uh, would normally be served, uh, but now it's going to the people who need it most. The Drysdale restaurant is set to reopen in August. Tasmanians are preparing to raise money for cancer support, but this year we like never before. The Cancer Council will hold its annual five kilometre fundraiser virtually due to the global pandemic. It will raise money for the transport to treatment program. We take uh, clients to their treatment appointments if they can't otherwise get there. And last year we travelled 269,000 kilometres. The event will be held in early September and registrations are now available online. The Tasmanian Tigers has bolstered its batting stocks for the upcoming season, signing a New South Wales young gun at Timothy Ward on a rookie contract. The batsman rounds out the final place in the Tigers squad, which includes new recruit and former test paceman Peter Siddle. The side is due to play its first one-day match in October. Good evening. A cool day today with temperatures in the low teens. Hobart just 10, Launceston 13, Burnie and Devonport 12. King Island, Smithton, St Helens all 13, Flinders Island, Lowhead and Strawn 12. Friendly Beaches and Ooze 11 today. Liaweeny minus 2 overnight, but it did warm up to a high of 3. Sunny conditions over the north and northeast, but low cloud elsewhere brought a few showers. Top fall today just 8 millimetres at Mount Reed. Now the cloud in the wake of the cold front caught the southeast mainland. Showers and thunderstorms with the next front near Western Australia. Most of Central Australia cloud free. Tomorrow the high moves over Victoria, extending a ridge over Tasmania. A cold front weakens south of the bite as another moves into the picture to the west. Northwest to westerly winds over the west and south. More southwesterly though over the north and east. We have a road weather alert for icy conditions. That's for parts of the Central Plateau, Midlands, the east, the southeast and the upper Derwent Valley. Apart from being slippery in the morning, a mostly sunny day for Hobart, 13 the top, 11 for Maydina. Oatlands, morning frost, sunny and 9 degrees later. 13 the high for Launceston, a sunny afternoon, sunny 2 for Devonport and 12. Minus 2 for Liawini to start the day, 7 the high later. Burnie mostly sunny and 13 degrees, a light shower for Strawn, 13 the top, Marawar 13 as well with uh, a shower two or two, 13 for St Helens and Sunny, Swansea 13 as well and 13 for Orford. On Sunday, widespread frost and fog and a shower likely in the afternoon over the west and south, fine and partly cloudy on Monday, maybe a shower over the southwest and on Tuesday, showers over the north extending to the west and increasing by evening. Showers for Perth tomorrow, sunny and 17 in Adelaide, cool and partly cloudy for Melbourne, Sydney 17 tomorrow, Brisbane 23 and a sunny 32 in Darwin. Partly cloudy in Hobart, 8 degrees at the moment, 7 in Launceston, partly cloudy as well in Devonport and 7 degrees. Love Friday nights, pizza night at my place and Kim, what have uh, you prepared in a gourmet fashion for your family for this evening? I have cooked a pumpkin soup <laughs> and... <laughs> No, how much pumpkin soup can you have in winter? That's all I can say.